Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Paxton. We're here at Culp's Hill, the Battle of Gettysburg. This is 2011. This is our second trip to this place, and I'm telling you, it is fantastic. It's, it's huge, and it's impossible to cover everything that you want to see in one trip. We're also planning to come back for the 150th anniversary of the battle in 2013, so maybe we will see you there. Amen. The scripture tells us this in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, in the days that we're living in today, a lot of stuff's happening. Wars in the Middle East, it seems like there's so much unrest in the nations of the world today as they protest against their governments, rightfully so in many cases. Uh, but nonetheless, the, the violence is there, the protest is there. Um, in the United States of America, the gas prices, the food prices, skyrocketing beyond belief in some cases. We're just in a time that Jesus called birth pains. We're in the time, I believe, right before the rapture of the church. But you know what, child of God? The scripture was, is clear in telling us that he has not given us a spirit of fear. Praise God. I don't have to be afraid about what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next month or even next year. But I can put my trust and my confidence and my hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as we look all about us and see humanity hurting so badly in these days, we see and we hear the cry of the human heart wanting something more than what they presently have. A Christian friend of mine today, we have what they need and we have it to give. You know, it's not such a thing as you come to my supermarket and buy we can give them the message of Jesus Christ absolutely free of charge. Praise God, and we should be doing that. Amen. We have not been given a spirit of fear. We don't need to tremble at the, at the way the world is going. We don't need to tremble. We don't need to, to hide in fear. We just reach out by power, love, and a sound mind. Let's look at those three words, power, love, and a sound mind. All of that is related to the Holy Spirit. And all of that comes as a result of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Amen. So as a Christian, when you put your faith in what Jesus did at Calvary, the Holy Spirit comes and he makes you to walk in power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. The times in which we're living is not the time for you to turn your back on the message of the cross. The scripture tells us this in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto you are called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. You're, you keep going with the message of the cross in this hour. You, you keep going. You persevere. You don't fear. You walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. You walk in power and love and a sound mind. All of that hinges on the object of your faith. Let me encourage you today from Culp's Hill, the Battle of Gettysburg. Put your faith in what Jesus did for you at the cross and keep it there. Don't transfer it to anything else. And if you will walk through the end times, you will walk through the last days in the power and the love and with the sound mind of the Holy Spirit. So, as we leave you today, be delivered from fear in Jesus' name. Be delivered from worry in Jesus' name. And walk in the power of God through the message of the cross. This is Brother Paxton saying, go with God, and He will go with you. part of Culp's Hill, I think every Christian ought to come to places like this, this is Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Culp's Hill here, and see the tremendous price that was paid for our nation to be one, for our nation to be whole. 
a single entity and not a divided nation. And the church, we can learn a lesson from that, you know. We're not supposed to have to fight any civil wars within the church. Jesus Christ paid the price for our freedom. He paid the price for our unity. And yet we're fighting and bickering and squabbling among ourselves. But this type of thing right here is a stark reality. This is not imagination. This is a reality of what took place here. Our, it made our country great in a strange sense because it strengthened our union. But as a child of God, I believe that we can have the peace, the unity, and the stability that comes from the Holy Spirit as we walk under the banner of the cross and love one another under that banner instead of, you know, my denomination this, my denomination that. It's, it's a tremendous place. It always puts a lump in my throat to come to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Len Paxton, and welcome to our podcast today. Today's podcast is entitled, Keeping Your Eyes on Jesus. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the scripture says this, Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. You know, when, I used to run in a 100-yard dash when I was a young man in high school. I know how important it is to stay focused in a race. Amen. Usually the people who fall to the rear are the ones who are out there just running to be running. I mean, they're looking around at everything, horse playing with one another, grumbling, complaining, even walking part way through the race. But it's the runners who are the most focused who eventually finish in the lead. This is what the Apostle Paul talked about when he said that we were running the race set before us. We were to be looking unto Jesus. You see, for this Christian life, the focus of our Christian life is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We're running a race. And what we focus on will determine how we finish. We cannot afford to look at other people alongside us who are running their race. We can't allow ourselves to be distracted by the crowd of problems and circumstances that call out for our attention. We cannot let the devil or his lies trick us into taking our eyes off the goal and cause us to lose our race. No. You and I, beloved, in these last days that we're living in, these days where there is fear and terror and attacks of the enemy on every corner, we cannot take our eyes off Jesus Christ. We must keep looking at Jesus. As long as we keep our eyes on Him, we will finish our course. And I don't know about you, but I want to finish my course and I want to finish strong for Jesus Christ. So I'll ask you today, how are you running your race? What are you looking at? I want to encourage you to develop the same kind of determination in life that a track runner has out on that field. Stay focused. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Keep your eyes on the message of the cross. Strive to reach the goals that lie before you and don't let anything distract you. I want to say that again. Don't let anything, any circumstance, any person distract you from your goal, which is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Grit your teeth, set your jaw, and run with the attitude, I've started out to run life's race for God, and I'm not letting up until I finish. Then, just keep your eyes on Jesus because He is the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for these few short moments with the people today. Take these words, Father, and drive them deeply within our spirits. Cause us, Father, to rise up in these last days and ever look to the cross, ever look to Jesus Christ, as our source, our source of strength, our source of prosperity, 
our source of health, our source of victory, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Paxton. I'm standing in the field of Pickett's Charge in the Battle of Gettysburg in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful day today. And I'm reading a little note from General George Pickett. Now, this is Pickett's Charge, possibly one of the worst things that ever could have happened to the South during the Civil War. General George Pickett of the Confederate Army wrote in his diary of the loyalty of his men towards his leadership. Here's what he said. Even now, I can hear them cheering as I gave the order forward. I can feel the thrill of their joyous voices as they called out all along the line, we'll follow you, Marsh George, we'll follow you, we'll follow you. And oh, how faithfully they kept their word, following me on, on to their death. And I, believing in the promised support, led them on and on and on, oh God. I can't write you a love letter today, my Sally, for with my great love for you and my gratitude to God for sparing my life to devote to you comes the overpowering thought of those whose lives were sacrificed, of the broken-hearted widows and the mothers and the orphans, the moans of my wounded boys, the sight of the dead upturned faces flood my soul with grief and here am I whom they trusted whom they followed leaving them on that field of carnage and guarding 4,000 prisoners across the river back to Winchester such a duty for men who a few hours ago covered themselves with glory eternal brothers and sisters God had forgiven David's sins of adultery and murder but he was still under a load of guilt. Even rest seemed impossible to him at that moment. Psalm 32 conveys his agony as he cries for forgiveness. Finally, David received peace from the Lord. General Pickett felt guilt over the loss of his men as they followed him right here into battle. At times we carry guilt over our sins. But we have a Redeemer who will forgive us and relieve us of our guilt. By turning to the cross, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, irrespective of what is in your past. I just told a congregation at Family Christian Fellowship in Fayetteville, Pennsylvania, just last night. That which is in your past is called history. It's His story. Don't let the devil tell your story. Let God tell your story and reach out to the cross of Jesus Christ and receive your forgiveness, receive your peace, and let him tell his story through your life in touching others who have gone through things. From this awesome place, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, the Battle of Gettysburg, Pickett's Charge. They say it haunted him for the rest of his life. And he believed in God and he knew the Lord as his Savior. But you don't need to be burdened down with guilt over past sins. Come to the cross today and let Jesus wash you in that cleansing blood. This is Brother Paxton saying, go with God. He will go with you. Praise the Lord everybody and welcome to the podcast today i'm just so thrilled to come to you again and study the word of almighty god these little podcasts have been a blessing to so many we receive your cards and your letters and we just want to say thank you for taking the time to listen now today i want to deal with a subject that's very interesting for all of us i'm sure because we all need forgiveness and we all every one of us has done things that has hurt other people hurt God, and hurt ourselves. And I want you to know today that God forgives and forgets. 
God forgives and forgets. Amen. Religious tradition has dimmed our view of the cross and diminished our understanding of what it means to be born again. People seem to make a recurring ritual out of repentance. Whatever their religion, they usually practice some form of penance or some sort of offering or confession or some kind of ritual by which they continually come before God exposing again and again the same sin and the same fault. But beloved, the Bible teaches that when we confess our sin, we are forgiven once and for all. I want you to recognize this. When you ask for forgiveness of those sins, and you confess them to God, and you turn from them, they are once and for all forgiven. Now, I didn't say that you couldn't sin again. Let's look in the Bible at 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. John said this, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You may sin in it inadvertently, but as a born-again Christian, you will not practice sin. John again said in his epistle, in chapter 3, verse 9, this is the Living Bible, The person who has been born into God's family does not make a practice of sinning. Because now, God's life is in him. So he can't keep on sinning. For this new life has been born into him and controls him. He has been born again. The only way that you will keep yourself in bondage is if you go back to those sins and pick them up and live in them again. You see, the only way that the devil can keep you under guilt is for you to turn back to that sin. Peter said in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, Repent ye therefore, be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When you turn from your sins, you forsake them, those sins are blotted out. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your forgiveness today. Thank you that by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross, sin shall not have dominion over us. That's what you told us in your word, Romans chapter 6, verse 14. We thank you for the cross today. We thank you for Jesus today, that he broke the grip of sin in our life, and he forever defeated, and he forever paid the price for our sins. We put our faith in him now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Paxton. I'm here at the Battle of Gettysburg. I'm, where, I'm at the location of Armistead's Brigade, in Pickett's division at the site of Pickett's Charge. It's a beautiful day here today as we look and reminisce about what happened in our nation nearly 150 years ago now. The scripture tells us, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's Matthew 16, 24. General Robert E. Lee demonstrated good leadership with self-control. Humanity taught Lee that he must expect others to fail, but as a Christian and a gentleman, Lee expected even more of himself. Lee said, I cannot consent to a place in the control of others if I cannot control myself. Lee gave advice one time to a lady in the care of her infant son and said, teach him to deny himself. Douglas Freeman, Lee's biographer said, had his life been epitomized in one sentence of the book he read so often, it would have been in the words, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Matthew 16, 24. Brothers and sisters, we live today in a very selfish world. A preacher friend of mine once said, The church has become so worldly and the world has become so churchy that we cannot tell the difference between the two in our day. And that is the case. It is said that General Lee's men were in constant awe of his self-control during the heat of battle. In our need for a revival in this post-modern world that we live in, we need a renewal of self-denial and self-discipline on a daily basis in our lives. Do you understand those words? If we're going to see a revival 
in the day and age in which we live, on a daily basis, we need a renewal of self-discipline and self-denial in our lives. Jesus took up a cross, suffered humility and shame for our sakes. His sacrifice was one of self-denial and self-discipline. We are called to be imitators of Christ. When we deny ourselves to meet the needs of others, we become more like Jesus. Amen. This is Brother Paxton from the Battle of Gettysburg, the year 2011, saying go with God and He will go with you. Here we are again at the Battle of Gettysburg, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. This is the South Carolina Monument. And I got a couple friends from South Carolina, Pastor Scott and Nikki Corbin. And we thought we'd stop by and, uh, and shoot this for you. Um, the South Carolina State Memorial honors the state's 11 infantry regiments, two cavalry regiments, five artillery batteries that fought at Gettysburg. Each is named on the side panels of the monument. The state of South Carolina altogether furnished 4,929 troops to the Confederate cause at Gettysburg, more than 1,300 of whom became casualties. The outline of the state is prominent in the center portion of the, of the memorial with palmetto trees, the straight state symbol on either side. Um, it's, this monument is where General J.B. Kershaw's brigade formed for the July 2nd advance on the round tops. Along the base of the monument is the following inscription. There is no holier spot of ground than where defeated valor lies by morning beauty crowned. Those words were penned by South Carolina native Henry Timrod, often referred to as the Poet Laureate of the Confederacy. So here it is, and we're basically stopping here for you, Scott and Nikki, fellow cross preacher friends of mine, and in honor of your great state. This is the grave of Jenny Wade. She was 20 years and two months old when she died. She was killed July 3rd, 1863 while making bread for the Union soldiers. And she was killed in her sister's home. We just came from there not long ago. We did a tour of the house. Jenny Wade. Yep, the beautiful wheat field. We call it the beautiful wheat field today. They called it the bloody wheat field. Battery D, the first New York light artillery. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Paxton coming to you from the bloody wheat field, the Battle of Gettysburg in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. In 1 Peter 2.24, a scripture that most Christians know by heart, the Word of God says this, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Ladies and gentlemen, I propose to you today that our God is a God who heals things. God heals spiritual lives. He heals physical bodies. God heals marriages. He'll heal your home. He'll heal your finances. He'll heal your emotions. Whatever you and I have need of, God is a healer. And it's because of the stripes of Jesus, it's because of the blood that was shed, and it's because of Calvary that God makes this healing available to you and to me, to a nation to a world. The Bible also says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want to tell it everywhere I go. We've met some folk on this trip that we have talked to about the things of God. And I just want to tell it wherever I go. Jesus Christ is the healer and he'll heal any area of your life that you have need of if you'll put your trust in him today. You know, a lot of people in our world are trusting religion, they're trusting in their church, they're trusting in the government, they're trusting in their job, they're trusting in their education, whatever, half a thousand things. But neighbor, my trust 
is in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for me at the cross. And that's what's going to put us over in life. And that's what's going to make the blessings of God available to us. So from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, the beautiful, beautiful battlefield that today we commemorate what took place nearly 150 years ago here. And we see that God has been faithful to mend our nation, to mend the hearts and the lives of so many people down through the years. You don't have to continue to hurt today. You can trust Christ and the Holy Spirit will perform a miracle in your life. Put your faith in the cross, trust in the blood, and believe in the love that God has for you. This is Brother Paxton saying, go with God, and he will go with you. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Paxton, and I'm coming to you from the Virginia Memorial at the Battle of Gettysburg. We have reached our final day of this battlefield tour in May of 2011. And this is our second time at Gettysburg, and each time I learn something new and something different. And my prayer is that for the United States of America is that we will learn to learn from history and some of the things that have happened in our past need not be repeated if we would just follow after the ways of Christ. My prayer for America is that there will be a revival in this land and that there will be a, an awakening back to the things of God in the United States of America. So we're leaving in the morning. We're heading for upstate Pennsylvania. going to spend some time with with a, a friend of ours, Paul and Cindy Cobb, and we just will be back uh, for a fall battlefield tour somewhere in the state of Virginia. Of course, here we're at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I'm just going to have Angie pan this field right around back to the memorial, and uh, we'll see you further on up the road. Thank you for being with us tonight for the Len Paxton Teaching Series. As always, it's a privilege and a joy to come into your hearts, lives, and homes with the Word of God. We want you to tune in again next week as once again we'll study a great Bible subject and we want you to be a part of our study, please. And don't forget to write to us this week with your prayer request. Ask us for those CDs when we offer them. Man, we love to sow that into your life so that you and I together can dig into the great truths of the Word of God. You can write to us, Len and Angie Paxton, Acts 2618 Ministries, Post Office Box 5714, that's 5714, Traverse City, Michigan, 49696. That zip code again is 49696. I'll be looking for your card or your letter. God bless you.